In the world of overused narrative tropes and unimaginative writing, we're always looking for unique ways to tell a story. Symbolism can very easily be that unique way, though it can work in the exact opposite fashion. Let's discuss. So let's first think about what symbolism is, and we're going to have to be quite specific here as symbolism is quite a vague term. We need to look at it from a storytelling standpoint. When telling a story, symbolism is quite simply a metaphor, using one thing to suggest another. Normally these are put in movies or books to subconsciously give the viewer information that would otherwise have to be spelled out. It's a lot more creative and unique than having a literal dialogue. One of my favourite basic uses of symbolism is in the Star Wars movies. All throughout the movie, very basic symbolism is used to show if a character is good or evil. Good characters are portrayed with bright clothing, while bad characters are portrayed with dark clothing. This is one of the more basic uses of the technique, but it works very well. Much better than having characters use cheesy lines or exaggerated characteristics. So how does it affect a narrative? Is it just added to look good or does it actually elevate a story? Well, if used right, it's one of the most effective storytelling devices. Symbolism taps into the subconscious part of its viewer, giving them vital information without them actually knowing. This enhances the viewer's experience as they're more connected to the story without them even realising. There's no need to stop the progression of the story to dump information. You can give minutes of dialogue information in one frame of symbolism. This technique isn't just limited to storytelling. It's so effective that a lot of advertisers use it, McDonald's being one of the most famous examples. At first watch, most adverts will be advertising their product, but really they're advertising something else. They're advertising basic life activities with their product, so that when you do those basic life activities, you'll subconsciously think of the product. My favourite examples tend to happen in movies. With scenes more tightly focused on and a lot more room for experimental scenes, symbolism becomes an even more powerful tool. One of the best uses being the 1995 Ghost in the Shell movie. This is definitely how symbolism should be used. Expressive, subtle and stylistically relevant. The film is very metaphorical in everything it does. The dialogue is suggestive and vast, the imagery is incredibly layered and the thematic exploration is endless. One of the most effective devices in the movie is its visual imagery. It's both powerful and symbolic. All throughout the movie, the images on screen reflect the themes and feel of the movie at that point. We're shown large shots of an industrial city when the story focuses on its inhuman and artificial ponderings, and more open, colourful shots when the movie focuses on the prospect of life. I won't talk about Ghost in the Shell's symbolism too much, because I could go on forever about it, and I have already done that in another video. But Jinro has a similar approach to symbolism, with similar success. It uses its imagery in a much more compact way, but it still comes out as incredibly powerful. The movie is at its core about human nature's reaction to very inhuman things. War, politics, poverty, they're all extremely complicated and manufactured things. This is contrasted perfectly by symbolically portraying our protagonist as a wolf, one of the purest untouched animals. It beautifully shows how humans, as advanced as we are, have no real control over our instincts or animalistic nature. How they do this is very simple, they just use very basic imagery of wolves, slowly becoming more complex as the movie goes on, but generally staying fairly simple. It's a perfect example of why we don't need to overcomplicate things to tell a story using visuals. So using symbolism seems like a fairly simple and effective thing to do given the examples, but there are loads of shows and movies that just don't get the balance right. One of the most prevalent imbalances would be Penguin Drum. The series has a very heavy focus on its visual imagery, giving it identity and style, but it didn't always work out that well. I felt that there were way too many occasions where the symbolism was overused, actually blurring the narrative instead of enhancing it. It's very easy to give the viewer too much information. Penguin Drum did that on many occasions. This just distracts the viewer away from the narrative and overwhelms them making it impossible to know what to focus on. Although this gave the series some much needed flair, it ended up being too forced at points. I have a similar problem with many of Studio Shaft shows, especially when the narrative is already weak. Shaft tends to have a hard time with their visual consistency. Sometimes their imagery can give the viewer important information, but a lot of the time it's too far-fetched or occasionally purely aesthetic, once again giving the viewer way too much information and not enough clarity. Saying all this, it's not impossible to create a visually busy series and maintain a strong narrative, Serial Experiments Lane being one of the best examples. It's jam-packed with imagery and content, but it paces everything out so the viewer can actually absorb the narrative. Lane uses a slower pace than the other shows mentioned to organise everything, and this is how it should be done if you want to create a really experimental visual experience. So what have we established about symbolism? It's a fantastic tool for storytelling, it gives a lot and takes very little but it can easily become a deterrent when overused or incorrectly used. I think more anime shows and movies should use it. I see writers using dialogue and sometimes info dumping to give information. These are dull and unoriginal ways to tell a story. People should use all their resources to dish out a narrative. But what do you think? Post a comment with your thoughts in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button and share it around. You can also watch more of my videos by clicking on screen now. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.